Welcome again to Cake Dragon Vids. And today we're going to have a special study called Angels, Demons, and Ghosts. Oh my. <laughs> because, you know, uh, you know, when Halloween, you know, comes, we think about all these things, uh, right? And uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about good angels and then we're going to jump into the bad angel. And um, we'll save the good for last, right? Praise God. But, uh, we, uh, I'm, I'm praying that I can upload this video uh, at least on Halloween day, or if not before. But still, um, if if that is not possible, I'll still try to get the end of this video about ghosts uploaded first. So enough said. You know, let's uh, start with angels, and uh, we're gonna open our Bibles to the Book of Hebrews, chapter one, verse fourteen. And I'm just gonna keep it real simple today, okay? You know, we're going to probably just study like, you know, uh, uh, superficial, you know, instead of getting real deep, uh, try to keep it real simple because we got a lot to cover and because of time's sake. So uh, enough, enough said, let's, let's pray. Father, we give you thanks and glory, Father. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to understand your word and receive your word. We give you thanks for the word we're about to receive. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. And like I said, I'm not going to get too deep today, and I, and I don't know, a verse by verse, uh, uh, sort of, sort of preaching, but you know, more, more simple, more, you know, lay, lay terms. Okay, so Hebrews chapter one and verse fourteen, talking about angels, it says, "Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation?" You know, and uh, here we see that God calls them ministering spirits. Well, the, the Greek word for uh, uh, angels is angelos, which means a messenger. And in Hebrew, the word for angel is also malak, which means uh, like to dispatch a deputy. Praise God. Or, and it also means a messenger. And here God calls, it a, God calls it them a min, mis, ministering spirits. But as we know, they not only have a spirit, they have a body because... 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 40 and 44 tells us that there are not only terrestrial bodies, but celestial bodies. And of course, later on, we're going to read where they were even going to be able, they were able even to pregnant women. So of course they have bodies, even though here God calls them ministering spirits. It says, Send forth to ministry, minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So we know about the good angels, right? Praise God. We know we we know about Michael. Remember Michael in the book of Daniel, the book of Revelation, and also uh, Gabriel, right? The mighty man of God, uh, which we read about in the book of Daniel, and also in the book of Luke, which announced the birth of Christ. And uh, we know about good angels. So I'm not going to dwell too much on the good angels, okay? But uh, I'll just talk a little brief on him. Uh, remember uh, the book of uh, Matthew chapter 18 verse 10 which talks about uh, you know that about our guardian angels it says here in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 10 says take heed that you despise not one of these little ones God's elect uh, you know praise God really you're starting off for I say unto you that even heaven in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my father which is in heaven in other words, God's elect guardian angels always have the attention of God. You know, and which angel in heaven would be the one that cares for you the most? Of course, your loved ones. That's why it's written there in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 10, that uh, when a sinner comes to Christ, there's great rejoicing in heaven. And who do you think, which of those angels are the ones that rejoice the most when you come to God? Praise God. Of course, your loved ones, praise God. And um, like I said, we're not going to talk too much about the good angels because it says there in the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 34, verse 7, that, you know, the angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him, and he delivereth them, or defends them, right? Praise God. And we read of the angel of God in Exodus 14, 19, the angel of God again in Acts chapter 27, verse 23, and uh, how an angel was was able to uh, release Peter from prison, the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 7. And also in the book of Daniel chapter 6, verse 22, how the angel of the Lord was able to shut the mouth of the lions. Praise God. So now we're going to shift into the evil angels, and that's what we're going to talk 
more about, aka uh, fallen angels, right? Praise God. So we know uh, the most famous fallen angel, the most famous evil angel, and he is an angel, not only a spirit, but an angel is Satan, right? It says over here in the book of Ezekiel, and like I said, we're not going to go into too deep. Praise God, and pretty much I covered this chapter two, twice, I think, I feel, or maybe even three times. But it says here in the book of Ezekiel, in chapter 28, verse 13, talking about the king of Tyre, Satan, thou has been in Eden. I mean, in, uh, in verse 14, it says, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. In other words, he's an angel that would protect, you know, where even where Jesus was, was sent. And I have set thee so, thou was upon the holy mount of God, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones. And these stones of fire, it says, these stones, you know who, of course, these stones of fire are, right? Those lively stones that Second Peter, I mean, the First Peter chapter 2, verse 5 talks about. That's us, God's elect. Praise God. So here we know that he was an anointed cherub. Praise God. He was an angel. Praise God. Pretty, and pretty, pretty high up there. Praise God. You know, and uh, we hear in Revelation chapter 9, praise God, in verse 10 and 11, you know, he... Uh, Talking about the locust army, which are fallen angels. It says right here, according to the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 8, they're supernatural. Praise God. It says right here, talking about the locust army, and this was verse 10, says, Revelation 9, 10, says, And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their powers to hurt men five months. So how long is Satan going to be here? Well, we read in Revelation chapter 12, verse Nine, uh, I mean, uh, Revelation 12, 12, that he cometh having short time. And we know that short time is here in five months. That's why the, those days will be shall be shortened to five months, praise God. And they haven't been shortened. They shall be shortened. That's very important to note. Uh, Matthew 24, 22, verse 11 says, And they had a king over them. Man, everybody knows who the king of all evil is. Who's the, who's the king of darkness? Who's the king of evil? Who's the king of these angels? Who's the king of all demons? Satan. So who is the angel of the bottomless pit? Of course, Satan. It says, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. And of course, who's the beast? In Revelation chapter 17, verse 8. And the beast, that's the Antichrist, and the beast that those saw is, was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Why? Because he's the angel of the bottomless pit. Satan is the beast. Satan is the Antichrist. Praise God. Verse, uh, again, Revelation 9 11. And they had a king over them. Who's the king of all evil? Satan. Which is the angel of the bottomless pit. So Satan is an angel of the bottomless pit. Whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, destruction, and the Greek tongue, that is Apollyon. Which is Strong's number 623, which means the destroyer, i.e., that means that is to say Satan. So even the Strong tells you who Apollyon, who's the angel of the bond's pit, or the king of the bond's pit. That's Satan. Praise God. And he's the beast that ascended out of the bond's pit. That's Satan. That he's the beast. He's the Antichrist. Praise God. And uh, yeah, let's, let's go. Let's show more proof. Remember last study about the angel of light? Uh, let's go to First Corinthians. Let's just read First Corinthians chapter eleven, and we'll read that verse again. Praise God! See if I can get there. I'm almost there. Eleven fourteen, and uh, second, <laughs> second Corinthians eleven fourteen. It says here. It says, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And of course, the word transformed is the word metakat. Metaschematizo, which means to disguise. In other words, it's saying, and normal order for Satan himself is disguised as an angel of light. In other words, he is an angel of light. Remember there in Ezekiel 28, praise God, he, he, the, the brightness, his brightness defiled him. And he, he was so bright that he thought that, you know, he was as bright as Jesus. Praise God. So he's an angel of light. That's his, that is a disguise. You know, think about Halloween, you know, all these costumes. You know what his costume is? And it actually is, is something that's on him. <laughs> For this guy, he can't take off. He's an angel of light. The most beautiful angel God ever created. And it's a read on, a, uh, some, and a, of course, of course he has access to heaven. 
you know, and he's the spirit that not working in the children of disobedience, you know, and he's that uh, mystery of iniquity that does already work. Why? Because not only does he walk in this earth, as First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, as a, as a roaring lion seeking whom to devour, but he also has access to heaven. And not only that, he was able to enter Judas in the book of John chapter 13, verse 27, and in the book of Luke chapter 22, verse 3. So now let's talk about the other evil angels. And not, no, not necessarily the ones that, that are judged and are locked up, but the ones that still have access to heaven. I mean, the ones that, you know, are evil. Praise God. We'll get to the ones that still have access to heaven. And let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 49. Psalm 48, verse 49. Like I said, we're not getting into deep today. You know, pretty much a superficial study, you know, just covering some verses. You know, Psalms 78, verse 49 says, He cast upon him, you know, talking about God. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll start verse um, verse 45. He sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which devour them, and frogs which destroy them. Talking about Israel, right? He gave also the increase unto the caterpillar and their labor unto the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to the hill, and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. He cast upon them fierceness of anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble by sending evil angels among them. These are these evil angels we're talking about. Praise God. You know, and God uses whomsoever He will. And from there, let's go to First Corinthians, and uh, let's read First Corinthians chapter four, verse nine. First Corinthians chapter four, verse nine. It says, For I think that God has set forth us, the apostles last, as it were, appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle. The word spectacle here is the Greek word theatron. Uh, Strong's number 2302 means uh, like theater, like a place, a public show, a theater, a general audience room. Praise God. In other words, you know, we're, we're, a, spect we're a theater unto the world. And to angels and to men. I don't know, but when we go to an auditorium, we, 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 we go there to, you know, get entertained, get entertainment, or go to the movies, or, you know, you, you get entertained. And we're like a theater to the world and to the angels. Which angels? Praise God. Which angels are always watching you to see, you know, who are you going to entertain? You're going to entertain good angels or bad angels? Because when we act foolishly and, you know, we don't act, according to how we're supposed to act, you know, we either entertain the good angels or the bad angels. And of course, if you're acting bad, of course you're, you're, uh, you're entertaining the bad angels. And guess what? They didn't even have to pay a ticket to go and see you in the theater and the drama because you just put a show, I put up a show for them. Praise God. It says, and unto the world and to the angels, to men. You know, praise God. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1 through 3. It says, Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust, and not before the saints? Do you know that saints shall judge the world, and of the world shall, shall be judged by you? Are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? You know, if, if you can take care of it at church, you know, take care of it at church. And verse 3 says, Know you not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? What are we going to do? We're going to judge what? Angels. Which angels? The good angels? Are we going to judge the good angels? No. We're going to judge the bad angels. Praise God. Why? Because apparently there's some angels that are not judged yet. Praise God. That are bad. Praise God. That's why it's, I mean, uh, that's why it's written that the everlasting fire there in, uh, what is it? Matthew 25 verse 41. That the everlasting fire is prepared to the devil and his followers, his angels, praise God. Let's let's look at uh, let's let's go ahead from there. Let's go to the book of uh, praise God. I got lost here. <laughs> let's go Job, the book of Job, chapter four, verse eighteen. Praise God. Book of Job four eighteen. It says. Behold, he put trust, he put no trust in his servants, 
And his angels, he charged with folly. Which angels did he charge with folly? Of course, those that came down and, and seduced women, as it is written there in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. And 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, of course, they left. They left. They weren't kicked out. They left on their own behalf. They left their own habitation, as it is written there in Jude 1, 6. And, uh, and God has them reserved unto, unto the day of judgment. Praise God. You know, God charged them with folly. Because they, they did wrong. And let's look at, uh, now let's, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Job 25 verse, 20, 25 verse 5. And it says, Behold, even the moon and, the, and it shineth not. Yeah, the stars are not pure in his sight. Which stars, what, the, what stars is, it, is he talking about here that are not pure in his sight? Praise God. We're talking about these stars, you know, that He created? No, we're talking about the angels. Here, stars uh, are symbolic of angels, Revelation 1.20. These, the stars are not pure in His sight. Praise God. Praise God. You know, they're not pure in His sight. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 8, and verse 39. We're going to start verse um, 37. It says, Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. We see, we're not only victors. We're more than victors. We're more than conquerors. Because Christ gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. And verse 38 says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come. Neither height or depth or any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Notice how it says, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels shall separate us from the love of God. Which angels will try to separate you from the love of God? Good angels? No. Bad angels. Even now, and then when they come with Satan, they will try to separate you from the love of God. But God, but Paul, I mean, yes, Paul is saying here, and I am persuaded, I am convinced that these angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah, praise God. Now let's talk about the evil angels that, that are, you know, that still have access to heaven. Praise God, okay? The evil angels that still have access to heaven. Praise God. In other words, they, as it is written here in the book of Ephesians, let's go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 3. Verse 10 says, to the intent that now unto uh, the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Where are these powers? Where are they at? They're in heavenly places. My question to you is, what are they doing in heavenly places if they're supposed to have been, been kicked out? Oh, this is talking about the good principalities. Oh, really? Praise God. You think so? Let's, let's read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness. The rulers of darkness, you know the ruler of darkness is, that's Satan, of this world against spiritual wickedness, and where? In high places. The, the Greek word for high is here, heavenly, heavenly places. Where? In heavenly places. Again, what are they doing in heavenly places? If they have already been kicked out. Well, you know, understand, brother. It's talking about the heavenly realm. The heavenly realm. Not necessarily heaven. Oh, really? Well, you know, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 5. Let's see what it says there. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 5. It says, For though there be that are called gods, the liturgy, gods, whether in heaven... God's in heaven. We know that there's only one God in heaven. What is this about God's in heaven? 
Are we talking about the angels, the good angels that are gods? No. Praise God. <laughs> Angel worship is an abomination. But there are gods, as it is written there in Deuteronomy chapter 32, that are worshipped, or angels that are worshipped as God. Those are the evil angels. They're worshipped as gods. And where are they? It says, there be that are called gods, whether in heaven. Where? In heaven. These are bad angels in heaven. And what are they doing in heaven? Is They've supposedly been kicked out already. Or in earth, as there be gods and many lords, many. But unto us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. Again, let's, let's just read Galatians 1.8. I always, you know, I, I read this all the time in my studies, right? And again, I will remind you of it. Uh, uh, Galatians 1.8 says, But though we are an angel from heaven, from where? From heaven. Meaning from heaven. And this is the bad angel. Why? Because it's, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. What kind of angel will preach another gospel than the one that is written? A good angel or a bad angel? Of course, a bad angel. And for, where is this bad angel from? From heaven. In other words, these, these angels that are coming down, imitating the coming of Christ. You know, if, if Jesus, I mean, if Satan is coming imitating the coming of Christ, well, who do you think his disciples are going to be imitating? I mean, who do you think his angels are going to be dis imitating? The disciples, praise God. And, you know, those angels are going to come down, you know, and the demons, what are the demons going to be doing when Satan comes with his angels? Who do you think they're going to be imitating? Praise God. He's going to be all out, Satan all out with all his power, lying signs and wonders. Maybe even loved ones will they try to imitate, which is probably the scariest story ever told. Praise God. Think about it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 22. I mean, 1 Kings 22. 1 Kings 22 and verse 19 says, And he said, Hear therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on His throne and all the host of heaven. Where, where is the setting here? Where is the setting? I saw the Lord sitting in His throne and all the host in heaven. So the setting is in heaven. So this taking place in heaven. And it says all the host of heaven. Does all include, you know, only the good angels? Or it says all. It says all. As we're going to read, verse 20, it says, And the Lord, is stand, and all the host of heaven standing, standing, meaning they have feet, by him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said unto the manor, and the other said unto the manor. Verse 21, And there came forth the Spirit, a spirit, you know, remember, angels are ministering spirits. Praise God. And, uh, you know, does the angels have body? Well, let's see if this one has a body. It says, And there came forth the Spirit and stood. Well, if he stood before the Lord, would he have, to, if he stood before the Lord, he must have had legs and must have had feet. Praise God. So, and legs and feet are what? Body parts. So, Praise God, yes, he stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, wherewith? And he said, I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit. What kind of spirit or what kind of angel will be a lying angel or a lying spirit? A good angel or a bad angel? Praise God. It has to be a lying spirit. has got to be a bad angel. Praise God. I've never heard of a good angel lying. Praise God. In the mouth. All his prophets, and he said, Those shall persuade him and prevail also, go forth and do so. Notice that it says that I will be a lying spirit in the mouth. Praise God. You, you know, taking over the mouth of those prophets. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets, of all these thy prophets, and the Lord has spoken evil concerning thee. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 24. 
Isaiah 24. And we'll, again, we're reading one verse. We're keeping it superficial. We're keeping it, you know, lay terms as possible, you know, simple. Uh, Isaiah 24, verse 21 says, And it shall come to pass in that day, you know, that day that the Lord comes, that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high. Who, are we talking about Lord punishing the, the good angels that are on high, that are in heaven? Who is who God going to punish? The the host of the high ones that are on high. What kind of host is he going to punish? The good host or the bad host? The bad host, the bad angels. And where are they? High, the high ones that are on high. The and the kings of the earth upon the earth. See, he's separating those, the kings upon the earth, from those that are high, you know, in heaven. Letting you know that he's going to punish those hosts from heaven and the kings that are upon the earth. Read it again. <laughs> and then from there, let's go to Isaiah 34. You know, praise God, Isaiah 34. And uh, we'll, we'll pick it up in verse 1. It says, Come near ye nations to hear and hearken, you people. Let the earth hear, and all that is there in the world, and all the things come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord, that's the wrath of God, that's, that's when He comes. The indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, is His fury upon their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood. Verse 4. And all the host of heaven shall be dissolved. Which host? And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Meaning the, you know, praise God. You know, the Bible, the, you know, those constellations tell a story of the Bible. And, you know, when all those stories are finally told, it's like a scroll being rolled up. Meaning that the word of God written, written in heaven shall be fulfilled. And all their hosts shall fall down, shall be cast down. When? Well, you know, when God comes. I mean, be right before the Lord comes, as it is written there in Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. That's the sixth trump. As the leaf falleth off from the vine, as the falling fig from the fig tree. You see, this is a parallel verse of the same thing, so you can know when this happens. When, when is the time that these hosts shall fall down here in Revelation chapter 6, verse 12? Look, just compare it to this verse, and it's saying the same thing. It says, And I behold, when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, the, where, the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. That's when Satan shows up, and the sun became black as sackcloth, and the as, up hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Those are the angels, as it is written here. And all their hosts shall fall down, as a leaf falleth from the vine, as a falling fig from the fig tree. And here in Revelation chapter 6 verse 13 says, And the stars of heaven fell upon the earth, even as a fig tree cast as her untimely fig, which is shaken of a mighty wind. Same thing. Same verse, almost. Praise God. Talking about the same instant at the sixth seal. When Satan comes, that's when these stars, these angels, will fall down. Praise God. And from there, we'll take it to... Um, uh, praise God. I know we're moving kind of fast. You know, we're talking about evil angels. And, uh, we'll, well, you know, praise God. We'll just go go ahead and go to Satan, praise God. That he, you know, Satan still has access to heaven, praise God, right? Uh, as it is written there in Revelation chapter 12, verse 8, that, uh, you know, that, that place will, that limited place, because place there is, limited place and will be taken away from him and Re revelation chapter 12 verse 10 says that he accuses us it says here in revelation chapter 12 and verse 10 says and i heard a loud voice saying in heaven now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of god the power of christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before where before our god day and night so where is he before our God, in the throne of God. And what is he doing up there if he's already kicked out? Let's read, look, look, look at Job 1, 6 again. And uh, I'm not going to go over all these verses because, I, uh, you know, we already covered all this. But, you know, let me just, let me just read uh, here in, in the book of Job. 
and 1, 6, and 7, then we'll move on, okay? There's got Job 1, 6, and 7. I guess I didn't put one of my markers there. It says here in Job 1, 6, and 7, it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Who? Where? Before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Where were they at? Before the Lord. In heaven. And who was there? Satan. Well, I thought Satan was kicked out. Well, I don't know about you, but when you kick out somebody from somewhere, you don't want them to come back. Well, so what is Satan doing there? Because he hasn't been kicked out. You know, let me let me give you a little, little secret. It's not a secret, but, you know, it might be a secret to you. I don't know. Praise God. But you know what? Not any, not any angel has been kicked out of heaven yet. Because why? Because either they're locked up in heaven or in, you know, in hell, which is the other side of heaven. Luke 16, hopefully we'll cover that, that chapter or half of that chapter. You know, praise God. Uh, and, uh, or, praise God, you know, they, have, they still have access to heaven. As Satan does, as we read here. And, so, and Satan came also among them, and the Lord said unto Satan, When comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Walking meaning, yes, oh, he, he, oh no, no, his spirit is the one that, walk, that walketh here on this earth. No. In order to walk, what do you need? Don't you need legs and feet to walk? And if you have legs and feet, you must have a body, right? <laughs> why, why do you think the Bible says there in Revelation, I mean in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 8, that it says, He walketh, seeking whom to devour, for, his God, for, for Satan or our adversary, the devil is as a roaring lion, a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom to devour, right? Praise God. So, uh, you know, and I'm not going to get too much with, you know, Jesus himself said in John 12, 31, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall, you, now shall the prince of this world be cast out, right? Praise God, you know, and you know all these scriptures, right, that we went through in the first video. And Satan shall come, part one. You know, some of these fallen angels, you know, you know, like I said, some of them are locked up in heaven. You know, and uh, and they were able to impregnate women. Why? Because, as it is written there in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, we were created in their image. And the image of God and the angels. The Lord said, let us create man in our image, Elohim. Uh, you know, Jesus, uh, plural, God and the hosts, praise God. And, uh, praise God, and uh, how were they able to impregnate a woman? Because, you know, as it is written there in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 40, you know, there is a natural body, I mean, there is a terrestrial body, and there is a celestial body. And forty in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 44, there is a, you know, let me, you know, let me just go ahead and read that verse. That way there won't be confusion, right, praise God, and uh, that way you know that I'm reading out of the Bible, as I always try to do. And First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 40 says, There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of celestial one and the glory of terrestrial is another. And verse 40, 44 says, It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Remember uh, there in uh, Luke chapter 16, the rich man and the poor man? Remember the rich man? About talking about tongues and, and finger, you know, person and eyes. Those what are eyes, finger, and tongues? What are they? Body parts, because they have a body. Praise God. And uh, and it says there in Genesis chapter six and verse one. And I'm going to read it. Praise God. And it says here in Genesis chapter six, verse one. And it came to pass when man began to multiply on the face of the earth. And daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God, those are the angels, as we read there in, in, in uh, the book of Job 1, 6, and 7. And among them was Satan, right? But it said, the sons of God saw that the daughters of men, 
See, separating the sons of God from the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them wives, all which they chose. You know, these are angels, beautiful angels. Praise God. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet the day shall be a hundred and twenty years. Verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. Giants. Uh, Nephilim. Or Nephilim. You know, that was the product of angels mixing with the human seed. With woman. That was the result. Uh, hybrids. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, in other words, after the flood, there was another second influx. It says, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, strong men, giber, which are of old, men of renown, famous legends. Where we get the story, you know, of, of Hercules. Mercury, Saturn, Saturn, and all these, uh, you know, legends are, you know, some of it is based on true stories. Praise God. They were, they had superhuman strength. Why? Because they were half angel and half, praise God, half human. Praise God. And there we see you, even buildings being built from, you know, they don't even know how they had this technology. Well, praise God, the technology came from these fallen angels and the strength came from these giants. Praise God. They were able to build, you know, even big structures, you know, that man cannot even, you know, praise God, comprehend or even understand how they could be built, not having technology. Well, guess what? They had the technology and they had the strength. Praise God. Maybe one day we'll, we'll do a study on that. And of course, you know, praise God, you know, as it is written there in, in uh, Matthew chapter 24, you know, I'm about to wrap things up on, you know, this first video. You know, in the second video, we're talking about demons and ghosts. But uh, here in Matthew chapter 20, uh, Matthew 24, verse 37, it says, It says, But as the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying. And what were they, who were they marrying with? We just read, they were marrying these fallen angels. And giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. Praise God. And it says, and you not until the flood came and took them all away. So what took them away? The flood took them away. Being taken by the flood, is that a good thing or a bad thing? You know, because in the end of this, Age, or I mean, yes, praise God. Right before the Lord comes, Satan is going to come with his flood of life. Revelation chapter 12 and verse 15. You know, and many shall be taken by his flood. And that's why it's written there, and knew not until the flood came and took them away. What took them away? The flood. Well, I want to be the one taken. You want to be the one taken by the flood? And it says, and, and then shall be two be in the field, and one shall be taken. And the other left. Praise God. Taken is a bad thing. Praise God. Two women shall be grinding in the middle. The one shall be taken and the other one left. You don't want to be the one taken. Remember, taken by what? By the flood. The day the, day the flood came and took them all away. Which it says, watch therefore for you not know what hour the Lord comes. You know why? Because when you're not watching, the Lord will come to you as a thief. You know, and if you're asleep, the Lord will come to you as a thief, as is read there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 4 and 5, and Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. Praise God. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read one more verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 10. It says, For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Which angels? The good angels or the bad angels? Praise God. And show authority meaning Christ. Because, you know, in, in Christ there's not male or female. Praise God. In other words, show authority which our husband is Jesus. Why? Because these angels are coming. That's why. 
It says, For this cause out the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Remember, before the flood, I mean, yes, before, I mean, before the, yes, before the flood, well, they were marrying and giving the marriage to who? To the fallen angels. And guess what? They're coming again. But you got to know, you got to let them know that you have Christ as your authority and that you're not going to be fooled. Praise God. That's why it says that a woman should have power in her head. And power, that's Jesus Christ. That's the word. Because of the angels. Praise God. And thank you. And uh, we're going to continue this study. You know, I'm going to go ahead and, and do another video on uh, demons and ghosts next. Okay? And, and uh, please, uh, praise God, uh, um, stay and, uh, and watch the next video. Okay? Thank you. And God bless.